The Christ and the Antichrist, chapter 24, titled The Grace of Papa God. Again, The Christ and the Antichrist, chapter 24, titled The Grace of Papa God. Grace in Christianity is the free and unmerited favor of Papa God. Papa God's grace is also his outworkings in a man. The grace of Papa God is his favor which is imparted to man to glorify his son and all the dealings of the spirit. The grace of Papa God is his gift of salvation granted to sinners for their salvation and inheritance. Common Christianity teaching is that grace is unmerited mercy which Papa God gave to humanity by sending his son to die on a cross thus delivering internal salvation. However, this definition does not cover all uses of the term in scripture. For example, Luke 2.40 says, And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. In this example, when using the definition of grace to mean unmerited favor, it does not make sense that the sinless Christ would need this. Equally, how can one fall short of grace, James 4, 6, or meekness attract it and pride repel it, Galatians 5, 4, if it is unmerited? James Riley has suggested grace is the empowering presence of God enabling you to be who he created you to be and to do what he has called you to do. Alternatively, Bill Goddard has suggested grace gives us the desire and the power that God gives us to do his will. Both of these definitions make good sense of the word grace throughout the Bible. In the New Testament, the word translated as grace is the Greek word charis, charis pronounced charis, for which Strong's concordance gives this definition. Grace, the state of kindness and favor towards someone, often with a focus on a benefit given to the object. <coughs> a Greek word that is related to charis is charisma, gracious gift. Both these words originated from Greek word chiro, to rejoice, be glad, delighted. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew term used is chen, which is defined in strong concordance as favor, grace, or charm. Grace is the moral quality of kindness, displaying a favorable disposition. In the King James translation, Chen is translated as grace 38 times, favor 26 times, twice as gracious, once as pleasant, and once as precious. From wikipedia.org So grace is the unmerited favor of Papa God which he gave to his saints and the rest of the mankind to glorify his son. The only way to attain this favor in the New Testament is by believing that Papa God raised up the Christ from the dead and by confessing his lordship over your life. As we have seen from the Bible, Abraham became righteous and the father of the righteous by believing in Papa God and his promises. Thus, Abraham didn't receive Papa God's grace through his works. In other words, for one to receive the grace of Papa God which is in the Christ, they need to believe Papa God's promises. Remember the Bible says on Galatians 3, 6 and 8 concerning Abraham, even as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. The Bible also says in Romans 4, 1 to 3, For if Abraham was justified by works, he had way off to glory, to glory, but not before God. For what said the scriptures? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. The promise from Papa God to Abraham was to him and his number one seed, Christ and his body. Therefore, just as Abraham did, everyone else need to have believed to be justified and made righteous by the word of Papa God. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He said not unto seeds, as of many, 
but as of one unto thy seed, which is Christ. Galatians 3, 16. Thus, Christ and his body is the number one seed to whom the promises were made by Papa God to Abraham. Howbeit, Isaac and Israel also received the same promise from Papa God that the whole world would be saved through their number one seed, which is Christ and his body. We have a testimony of this from the Bible which says, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whether he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. In other words, Papa God promised to bless the world through Abraham, Isaac, and Israel's seed, Christ and his body. This unmerited grace, which was to come upon all the nations, has nothing to do with the law of Moses, nor any religion, save the Christ. This is why the Bible testifies and says on John 1, 16-17, And of his fullness have we received, and grace for grace, for the law. Brackets of sin and death was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Please take note of the fact which is that Isaac and Israel have nothing whatsoever to do with the grace of Papa God which is in Christ in the New Testament. This is because they themselves need to receive the gospel, believe it, and make the necessary confessions before they are brought into the righteousness of Papa God, Christ Jesus. They, in the above sentence on verse 42, refers to the Israelites today. But as for the rest of the Israel, Israelites before the New Testament, the gospel was preached to them in the grave by the Christ when he died. This is confirmed for us in 1 Peter 3.18, which says, Christ also had once suffered for sins, the judge for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits, brackets, the dead, Isaac and co, in prison, brackets, the grave. So everyone has to believe the gospel and confess accordingly in order to receive the unmerited salvation of Papa God, even the dead, as we have just seen. Now to him that walketh is a reward not reckoned of grace, but of death, but, but to him that walketh not. But believe it on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness, even as David also described it, the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, and whose sins are covered by the blood of Christ. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Commit this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the circumcision also. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How is it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or uncircumcision, not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision, and he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had, yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised that the righteousness might be imputed unto them also, and the father of the circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had been yet uncircumcised. In the above scriptures, the apostle Paul explained it all for us. He said that Abraham did not become righteous by his works or by being circumcised in the flesh. What the apostle is saying is that Abraham had already been declared righteous by Papa God before he was circumcised in the flesh on Genesis 15.6. This means that the circumcision of the flesh which Abraham received had nothing whatsoever to do with him becoming righteous because he was already declared righteous by the word of Papa God before he got circumcised. This is the first point. The second point is that although the Jews are heirs of God's promise to Abraham, they never quite received the end of that promise because of the reason in the next verse. The promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law of Moses, but through righteousness of faith. For if they, Israel, which are of the law, 
be heirs. Faith is made void and the promise made none effect because the law worketh rot. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by unmerited grace to the end that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God. Romans 4, 13-17 As we have seen, Abraham became righteous not through his works, but by believing in Papa God's promises and having faith in them and in Papa God. This is the only way for any man to become righteous in the word of Papa God. This is also the only way for a man to receive Abraham's blessings. You don't pray to Papa God to make you righteous, nor do you attain righteousness through your works, because Papa God has already made every man righteous in the Christ and his wife. Abraham's blessings is Papa God's free gift for every man, and as such, what the man needs to do is to collect it from the word of Papa God contained in the Bible. This is why the Apostle Luke recorded for us the Apostle Paul's words to one of the brethren in the Acts of the Apostles below. Acts 20, 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. This is where the nation of Israel went wrong in the past. In Israel, instead of submitting, I beg your pardon, Israel, instead of submitting herself to the righteousness which comes by the faith of Abraham contained in the promises of Papa God's word, she went ahead and tried to establish her own righteousness. This is the point the Apostle Paul was trying to get across in his letter to the Romans on chapter 10, 1, 10. The Apostle said to the Roman Christians, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, say not in thy heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the, drip, into the deep, that is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what said it? The word is near thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved, brackets, from the grave and death. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse us. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Did you see that? Did you see all of that? The word of Papa God and his promises are not far from you, but instead they are in your heart and in your mouth. You start by believing that Papa God raised you and the Christ from the dead. Then you confess the Lordship of the Christ over your life. Once you have activated the Christ in you by the above confession, the next step is to receive the Holy Ghost from the outside. In other words, it's time for you to be baptized into the Holy Spirit. Brackets, Jesus Christ. This is done by another Christian who is baptized into the Jesus Christ. The Christian performing the baptism is supposed to lay their hands on the new or old believer's head to receive the Christ. Brackets, Holy Ghost. This is one of the ways it was done in the Bible. Please take note of the fact which is that there are many who claim to be Christians today but have not received the Holy Ghost. Brackets, Jesus Christ. Even in Bible days, not all the church and all those who claim to be the believers in Christ received the Holy Spirit. Brackets, Jesus Christ. It is written in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verses 1 to 6, by the Apostle Luke. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, 
Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that it is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. In the above revelation, the Apostle Paul came across some brethren, some brethren, whom the Bible called disciples of Christ, and asked them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? We can see from the apostles' question to the disciples that those who that those who become believers into the Christ are expected to receive the Holy Ghost. Brackets, Jesus Christ afterwards. Again, the apostle asked the, the said disciples, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? The disciples answered Paul back, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. The apostle Paul went ahead and asked them, Unto what then were you baptized? Unto John's baptism, baptism, the disciples replied. As we have seen in the previous verses, those disciples whom the Apostle Paul came across that day only had the baptism of John the prophet. The Apostle Paul admonished them by saying, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him who should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. John's baptism is done with water and this is the baptism of repentance. John's baptism is a lesser act and it is supposed to be done by the believer after he or she had undergone the baptism of Jesus Christ. The word of Papa God went on to say with regards to Paul and the disciples he encountered. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Thus, the baptism of Jesus Christ is done by another Christian telling another to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and then the one doing the baptism has to lay their hand on the one being baptized for the Holy Ghost to come on the one being baptized. According to this revelation, many can be disciples and apostles of the Christ without having received Jesus Christ, who became the Holy Ghost after his ascension into the Father. 2 Corinthians 3, 17. There's another way of receiving the Holy Spirit from Papa God. This method is best suited for all those who have no one to minister the Holy Spirit to them. The Bible shows us that, shows us, <coughs> beg your pardon, the Bible shows us, <coughs> The Bible shows us what this other method is in the Gospel of the Apostle Luke. On Luke 11, 9 to 13. On Luke 11, 9 to 13. We proclaim and say to the mankind, And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and it shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks, ask, 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 I mean, ask, receive it. And he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any, if a son, if a son shall ask bread, if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is, is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then been evil, know how to do good. If you then been evil, know how to go, do uh, know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit, Holy, give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Thus, one can receive the Holy Spirit, who is Jesus Christ, after believing the gospel by asking Papa God. The above revelation are the steps that one needs to take in their discovery of Papa God's inheritance in Abraham and his seed. Everything begins with believing and confessing the Lordship of Christ over one's life, as we saw on Romans 10.10. 10. Once the man is converted to the Christ by his initial believing and confession, it doesn't stop there. 
Remember the word of Papa God on Romans 10.10, 10, which says, With the heart man believeth, believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Thus, with the heart, the mankind can believe unto the righteousness of Papa God, which is the everlasting life. And with the mouth, confessions can be made unto the inheritance of the saints, which is Papa God's salvation. Believing and confessing is the principle of Papa God's grace and inheritance in the faith of the righteous, Abraham. This is how to receive your inheritance, inheritance contained in the Bible from Papa God. This is because the power of the everlasting life, brackets, God's righteousness, which is your inheritance and free gift from Papa God, is upheld and made to come to pass by your confessions. This is also why you were told on Proverbs 8, 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Again, the only way to receive your inheritance from Papa God, which is contained in the Bible and in your spirit, is by believing it and confessing it with your tongue. You believe into Papa God's righteousness, which you see in the Bible with your heart, then you confess it unto salvation. For example, Papa God said in the book of Isaiah the prophet on chapter 57, 17, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, said the Lord. To receive the blessing of the above words from Papa God, the mankind needs to believe it with his or her, or her heart, and then he or she needs to make consistent confessions based upon it in order to walk in the power of the said words. This is the principle of the salvation of Papa God. Papa God had said that we may boldly say whatever he had said. Whatever Papa God had said, this is what we ought to keep on saying. Whatever it is Papa God has said and promised us in his word contained in the Bible, we must believe and say them. This is how confession is made unto the salvation of Papa God. This is exactly what the Apostle Paul told you on Hebrews 13, 5 to 6, when he said, Let your conversation be with, without convulsiveness, and be content with such things as you have. For he had said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Because Papa God had previously said in his word to us that we will never, that he will never leave or forsake us. Therefore, we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will fear no man. Even so, Papa God said in his word to us that there is no weapon fashioned against us that will ever prosper. Because we believe this with our hearts, we have boldly confessed that we will and we will continue to confess to many witnesses that we will never die and go into the grave. No weapon fashioned against us will ever prosper, and any spirit that rises up against us, against us in judgment, we condemn them to the lake of fire, and our righteousness is of Papa God. This is how to confess your way into the inheritance of Papa God in Abraham and his seed, Christ Jesus. This is Papa God's way of doing things. You cannot expect to receive something from someone by going about it your own way. There's a way and ways to do things in places. In our way, which is the way of the truth and the everlasting life, we believe what Papa God has said about all things through his prophets and his chosen vessels in the bible therefore we speak and establish them in our world let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the lord and he will have mercy mercy upon him and to our god for he will abundantly pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways said the lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. Isaiah 57, 7-11. 
Papa, God's ways of doing things are not ours, but we must do his ways if we want to get his results. And this is the only way to do and the only way to do this is by speaking the same thing in consent with what he had previously said. In other words, we do and activate the power of God which is contained in his word by believing and speaking it. This is why the pastor of pastors, brackets, Revelation 14, 6, said in the Rhapsody of Realities, brackets, June 2015, everything God gave us is activated through speech words. Many, however, don't understand the power of words. The primary, the primary function of your mouth and your tongue is to steer your life in God's direction for you. Remember what the Bible tells us about God in the book of Genesis. It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. The first speech we noticed from God wasn't to somebody. Rather, he started by talking to situations and circumstances. He was making things happen through the power of speech, showing us what we are supposed to do with words. He wanted light, and he said, Let there be light, and light came into being. He gave us the ability to speak so that to speak so that like him we can call into existence the things we want to see in our lives and environment. Hallelujah. Your words locate you. What you say determines where you will be in life. That's the reason it's so important for you to avoid talking neg negatively. For instance, when a Christian declares I can't do such and such, he may think that only that only applies to the contents of that particular statement but it's not so that statement immediately works in his spirit and affects his divine nature this accounts for why some christians are in dilemma in their faith walk they think that they know the word of faith yet they don't yet they're not getting the right results of the word in their lives and they wonder why the contradiction the reason is that they is that they they've programmed too much negativism into their spirits with their confessions which must be changed <laughs> amen and only the word can make that happen think and talk right talk according to the scriptures be sure that your words are in sync with the revealed word of god always that way you will consistently make progress and chart your course from glory to glory says the pastor of pastors revelation 14 6 as we have seen the wicked in their works and rebellion against the word of God have tried to prevent the nations from receiving the blessings of Abraham and his seed. Now that we have seen what the grace of God is in the Bible, let us look more inside the scriptures to see how the Christians are those whom the Muslims want to be blessed as along with Abraham and his seed. Remember how we previously saw the Muslim asking his imaginary God to bless him or her as Papa God had previously blessed Abraham and his seed, brackets, family. From the Old Testament, in the Bible, it says on Psalm 84, 11 to 12, The Lord God is a son and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that's trusted in thee. So the promise in the Old Testament was that Papa God was going to give the righteous his grace and glory. The Bible also says in the book of, Pro of the Proverbs of Solomon on chapter 3, 33 to 35, The cause of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blessed the habitation of the just. Surely he scorned the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. Thus, the word of God, who is God, gives grace to the humble. The wisdom of Papa God also said on Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7 to 9. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. When thou dost embrace her, she shall give to thy head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory. Glory shall she deliver to thee. As she delivered to thee. Amen. The wisdom of Papa God is the word of God. 
the Christ and his body. Thus the Christ has delivered on our heads the crown of glory and the ornament of his grace. This is why the wicked in its prayer to his imaginary God wants him to bless him as the real God has blessed his saints in the Christ. It is written, I, Papa God, will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Had not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see, your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound things which are mighty, and base things of the world, and things which are despised, had God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are that are and base things of the world and things which are despised had God chosen yea and things which are not to bring to naught things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence but of him are you in Christ Jesus who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that according as it is written he that